Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is Evermind Astro. This video is going to be about Black Moon Lilith in Gemini. Okay, Black Moon Lilith in Gemini. And if you're not sure about Black Moon Lilith or how to find her in your chart, I have linked to you in the description box to a resource that should answer all of your initial questions about that and get you going. And that's kind of what I want to do with this video is just kind of get the ball rolling on your understanding of your Black Moon Lilith in Gemini. This will also have some resonance if you have Black Moon Lilith in the third house, right? You always want to work that combination of sign and house placement. So with Lilith, we begin with the wound, right? What is the Black Moon Lilith in Gemini wound? Ooh. <laughs> Gemini, this... I gotta run this two ways, right? I gotta run this two ways with Gemini, which is kind of funny because, you know, Gemini's the twins. Um, this could be your own mind or this could be other people, okay? Your own mind or other people. Because um, in some sense, you know, if you want to get really abstract about it, you can think about how other people are just a manifestation of your own thought forms. So when you're talking about what does your own mind say or what are other people saying, kind of on a higher level kind of all the same thing right um so i mean that might be something for you to think about but this could really for some of you this is going to be entirely internal where it's your own negative self-talk your own mental processes um even your intellectual ability uh you, you could feel stupid <laughs> um like oh i feel like this one is really complicated because there's so many different ways this can go because gemini is just crazy mutable energy and it just explodes all over the place, right? So this could be your own negative self-talk, your own mental problems. This could even be mental health problems. This could be intellectual or challenges or learning disabilities. I mean, those are some very, very, very like grounded manifestations of this, right? But it really, I mean, this is just how do you think about yourself, right? You might think you're stupid even though you're totally smart, right? <laughs> or you might think that you have all of these problems in your mind. You might be aware that your mind, that your thoughts is holding you back with its own bullshit, but you can't ever quite break out of a hamster wheel, right? It can feel like a hamster wheel inside of your own head. Of course, Gemini is also very communicative, right? You can have, so that, that's why you can end up having problems with other people because there's like a complete communications breakdown. So very interesting to try and boil down like what is the wound of Gemini um, and I mean even getting into a deeper levels of it here Gemini is also like the the human reality right not exactly the physical reality which is more like Taurus but the human reality our mental reality our consensus reality the how we talk how we think and how we communicate to each other right a very very human level um, and it's like what is real it's like what, what is right in front of you as opposed to the opposite of Gemini, which is Sagittarius, which is, you know, transcendence and above everything and the abstract and the, the alchemy of all of these little things. But Gemini is what's right in front of you in the human reality. So some, and, and you know, honestly, when I see people with challenging Gemini placements, I basically see this rippling out on many different levels, right? Like you might have some kind of wound in your mind to do with how you think. And that, of course, if you have that, then of course you have communication challenges, and if you have communication challenges, then sometimes you end up having really big social problems. So it can kind of cascade out of control really fast. So I think, man, like you don't want to have challenging Gemini energy because it, it really cascades and can affect every single area of your life. So when you're first looking at your Lilith in Gemini, it might actually be hard for you to realize that your wound here is a Gemini wound, is a wound in your mind. And I would be willing to bet that for most people, if you identify some kind of issue you have with other people or with reality, with being in reality or communication, if you boil that down enough, you'll find that the origin of the wound is in your mind. Okay, the origin of the wound is in your mind. But it's like, but what is it? What have you rejected? What have you rejected? Maybe that's something for you to think about. <laughs> Maybe that is something for you to think about. What have you rejected? Have you rejected? What's real? Have you rejected what's real? Have you rejected what is right in front of you? 
Have you rejected your own thought processes? So, a little hard to say. I feel like this is going to like hit drastically differently for all of you different Geminis. So let's take a look at like how you react to this wound that you might really be struggling to identify, right? How do you react to this wound that you can't quite identify? With the Black Moon Lilith, the way she, re she reacts, it's extreme reactivity and she will either become obsessed or she will drastically reject, right? Obsession or rejection, so because of this wound. So if she becomes obsessed, right, if Black Moon Lilith and Gemini becomes obsessed with her wound, it can be this feeling of trying to think her way out of insanity, <laughs> right? Trying to think her way out of insanity or trying to think her way out of all of this pain and suffering. It's this idea that thinking is what will be the answer. Thinking is what will set her free, right? Thinking is what will set her free. Um, do, you know, do you know the movie A Beautiful Mind? <laughs> it's, it's that kind of thing where he, you know, the guy in the movie has to actually like logic his way out of his experiences of psychosis and realize, you know, the hallucinations he's having aren't actually there and he has to like logically under, like understand this, right? And, you know, my husband and I, we always call it like doing a beautiful mind, right? When, when you like somehow manage to think your way like, out of a problem. Um, trouble is, it's that rarely happens in, in, in life, right? That rarely happens in life. Um, when we chase thinking as the answer, it's a little bit like a hamster wheel. And you know, I've, I've been there, guys, I've been there. I have Gemini moon in the eighth house and it's uh, conjunct um, my wald myth Lilith. So not the black moon Lilith, but an even more wrathful version of Lilith, okay? Wald myth Lilith is, is another story, but you know, Suffice to say, I have some experience here, right? Um, it's trying to think your way out of your problems, right? Just trying to think your way out of your thought problems. Um, and we can do that for years and years and years and years and years and thinking, 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 thinking. And we might have some type of success. We might think we're having success. It might make us feel better some of the time. Ooh, but at the end of the day, is that really what's gonna do it, right? Is that really what's gonna work? Or are you gonna need a different approach, right? Are you gonna need a different approach? Um, and so that's actually what Lilith, Black Moon Lilith and Gemini explores when now she's in the opposite side where she's rejecting, right? Where she's rejecting thought, rejecting thought, right? Essentially rejecting the mind, um, rejecting reality, rejecting communication. So really interesting when Black Moon Lilith and Gemini is over here rejecting all of this, uh, <laughs> she can be in this place of, I'm never going to think again. I'm going to sit in meditation and just, um, and I'm going to blank my mind because the mind is the source of all my pain. The mind is the source of all of my suffering. Communication is futile. Nobody will ever understand what I mean anyway, so I'm not even going to bother trying to communicate. And I'm just going to completely reject reality and I'm just going to become like a head in a vat. <laughs> right? But like not even a head in a vat, like a heart in a vat, an awareness in a vat. And there can be this like complete dumping of the mind, like completely wipe the mind, right? To completely wipe the mind. So I feel like what Black Moon Lilith will eventually learn here with this is that, okay, thinking, I thought and thought and thought and thought and thought, and it didn't quite solve my problem. And then I refused to think, and I sat in the void, and I emptied my mind entirely, and I just sat in rejection of all of this, and that didn't really do it either. <laughs> that didn't really do it either. So what is a poor Lilith and Gemini to do, right? What is a poor Lilith and Gemini to do here? What is the solution? So this brings us back to Gemini, right? The twins, the two halves of one whole, the lover's card in the tarot. It's the blending of the two, the harmonizing of the two, knowing that Yes, thoughts and the mind cause pain and suffering. Sitting in a completely blank mind kind of makes you feel better for a little bit, but doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it doesn't really take you anywhere. It's just kind of a hole. It's just kind of an escape. So blending those together 
This is where we have to tune into the mutability of Gemini here, guys. The mutability of Gemini. And I think Lilith in, Gem Lilith in Gemini is really going to have to own this, okay? She's really going to have to own her mutability, her changeability, her fluidity, and her flexibility. To know that I am like this one moment, and then I am like this another moment. And I am like this one moment, and this, and this, and this, and this, and that, and this, and that, and that all over the place, constantly changing, constantly iterating, right? That's what mutable means, to change, to change constantly. Um, and so with all of this, always with Gemini, there can be this feeling here of, like, I'm, if, I'm, if I change too much, people like don't like that because that triggers people. And then if I change too much, I mean, who am I? Like losing my sense of self, <laughs> right? Or like, am I just a chameleon, right? Like what's going on here? There can be that kind of problems with Gemini. Um, Gemini has to get okay with that. Gemini has to get okay with being an entire multitude of personalities. Gemini has to get okay with being an entire multitude of thoughts, including no thought, right? Including no thought. To be all of these thoughts and to be no thought. To be all of these personalities and also no personality. To be long, to completely identify with all of these diverse aspects of self all at once interchangeably, and then also to have, to have no need for a fixed identity, <laughs> right? This is, this is the, this is the struggle of Gemini. And I feel that this, the Gemini struggle is not emphasized often <laughs> in the stuff you find on the internet, right? There's a true struggle of Gemini here trying to find identity in an entire cascade of identities, right? And being okay, taking on one identity, t taking on one face and then another face and then another face and then another face and saying, that is me, 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 that is me. They're all me. And also I'm none of them, right? It's, it's, you, you gotta get, <laughs> It's not exactly transcending duality because that's the job of other signs, right? The job of Gemini is to get comfortable in duality, get comfortable in polarity, get comfortable walking both sides at the same time, knowing that you are this and you are that. You are this and you are that. And I think once Gemini makes her peace with that, Black Moon Lilith and Gemini makes her peace with that, you're going to come into a place of just being okay with how the cookie crumbles, right? Just being okay with how it is when you wake up in the morning and just really just accepting it however it hits you. Uh, there's this feeling with Gemini when Gemini is like really healed, it can just be like, okay, that and this and that and this, right? And I can just keep iterating on, on that. That's really what this is about. So Gemini healed here is really good at rolling with the punches, really good at being adaptable and fluid in the way she thinks, in the way she takes on different identities, right? And in the way she moves through duality. It's, I, I feel like if you don't have some Gemini energy here, this just like, isn't gonna, make, <laughs> this isn't gonna make sense, right? But those of you with, with your, with your Gemini placements, this will click, you, you will kind of understand this on some level. So I'm just gonna leave this one here. Good luck to all of my fellow Gemini characters <laughs> out there. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting, right? It's an interesting thing being Gemini. So I'm going to leave it at that. So if you want to connect with me more deeply, I got a whole bunch of links down in the description box. I have another YouTube channel. I have readings, uh, tarot and astrology readings that I offer on my website, also on Etsy, if you prefer to shop on Etsy. Um, I'm going to be doing a Lilith reading if you'd like me to read your Lilith energy. And I have a newsletter sign up if you want you know, the astro bi-weekly updates from me in your email inbox, all of those good things. You can find them down below. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.